Hey, what up, America? This your boy, Bouchon Glover, the Better Black America TV on YouTube. Today is Tuesday, October 9th, 2018. Now, I got to give a shout out. Hey, we finally got 10,000 views, so now it's time to get those subscription up. So before anything, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Those of you who know, understand YouTube, got to get those 10,000 views to even be considered to monetize. And like I said, I'm not over here for, for profit. I'm over here for content and knowledge because God's people shall not perish due to the lack of knowledge. Now, today, as Ice Cube would say, is a good day. But it's bittersweet because I have to accept the fact and understand that the Democratic Party has been has is run has run amok. They're going rogue. They're going rogue, y'all. They on some they on some different stuff. Because I saw something yesterday that you know I instantly turned to CNN and all the liberal news networks just to see uh, a press conference or to see anything that was going to warn or help the people. And all I saw was resist. So we really have to take a long, hard look at uh, where we're going to go. More importantly, black men. And like I said, don't be offended by the word black because a better black America is that black is an acronym for black, Latino, Asian, Caucasian kinsmen. OK, and that Asian covers all Mongolians and the Caucasian, the C. Uh, covers all Aryans who want to rock with us or who's poor or disenfranchised or somehow has been thrown in the minority cesspool in which black men were starting to get out of that crap bucket because it was, we was forced to be in there because socially and economically um, it's time to go get the bag, time to produce, manufacture, distribute, create. That's what it's time to do. That, that, that's the time right now. That's where the climate is because you know, going to work and retiring at the age of 75 and relying on Social Security, that's not the way to go. Because we were, we was taught and wired wrong. You know, we was taught and wired wrong, but today is a good day. But like I said, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. Because our politicians and our uh, Democratic elected officials, more importantly our senators, they letting us down. You know, they're letting us down because they have their own agenda. And their agenda is to stop the progress of the country not to help the country progress even further but stop the progress of the country because if you look at cnn the world's coming to an end and donald trump is racist and kavanaugh is um it's going to be you know it's going to be a cloud over his you know but big picture wise what does that have to do with the average joe what obama would say what does that have to do with the common men and common folk and working class people of this country? Nothing. You know, but from a political perspective, it's a two party system. When I say two party system, that's two parties. So if you're not at the elite level of either party, you pretty much the grass. You pretty much not even in the conversation. And they use these television programmings to program the minds of people uh, to get them to be on some different stuff to kind of wire them to where they're angry, they're mad, they're upset, they're afraid, you know, but there's a silver lining to every storm cloud. So no matter what's going on, we still going to be all right. So we're going to live real comfortable in the belly of the beast until it's time to actually um, either be exhorted out or somehow become a mechanism or organism forever. Okay. Because we can't just sit down. But when I say it's bittersweet, it's because um, nobody's letting the people know what's going on, truthfully. And I have to do this for Chicago. So get this video, share this video with your Chicago people because and let them know. Because uh, yesterday, President Trump, President Trump, he delivered a speech uh, in Orlando, Florida yesterday at the police convention. And not only is uh, making America great again um, on his agenda, but he also has an agenda to making America safe again. And he takes and he's taking it personal. The fact that Chicago has been on the front line in the sense of the murder rate, crime, 
you know, the mayor stepped down, the mayor don't want to do anything, and they're trying to make it political. And the uh, Pastor Darrell Scott and all these guys, you know, just went on and, you know, had the meeting with Trump and whatever funding that they got for their organizations, you know. But they're not going to the people and telling the people the real. Because yesterday, President Donald Trump, and I mean yesterday, Monday, October 8th, 2018, at the um, speech that he delivered in Orlando, Florida, at the Florida Police Convention, he called to order the stop and frisk in the city of Chicago. And I'm going to say that again. President Donald J. Trump issued the initiative for the city of Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, the stop and frisk mandate. Now, that's not a good thing. I'm from South Central Los Angeles, 66 of Vermont to be exact, where I grew up in the, in, in the, in the height of the dope game, you know, in the height of game banging in the early 80s, 90s. And that stop and frisk was in full effect. And I remember as a, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old boy playing football in the street and the cops just roll up and they just jack us up. I mean, like, like, like with no regard to us being citizens of this nation, with no regard for us being human, you know, we damn near was three fifths because like I said, they'll just roll up and just, it, it just depend on what you know, how they wanted to do it. They could have been having a bad day. They, they, they just would roll up on us and just jack us up, putting flashlights in our mouths and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, man, we, we kids, we not crack addicts or anything like that. But I guess people was putting dope in their mouth at the time. So man, and, and, and it was so, so bad to the point where, you know, we would just run when we saw the police for no reason. You know, we developed escape routes in the neighborhood. You know, we, we had a thing called brick wall, brick wall, meaning we could get from 65th Street to, to 64th or from the, the 5 to 68th Street by going through people's backyards and, you know, hovering through the fences. Because once they caught us, they didn't care about what was going on. They just wanted to put some hands on us, you know, to the point where they even tried to run us over with cars through our alleys. You know, but at least, you know, we were smart enough and wise enough to you know, to have breaches to where they didn't know where to, where, to, where, to, where to turn right. So when we turned right, they turned either to the gate or they kept going and we was able to, you know, do the brick wall, brick wall and get to a safe haven, at least in the house. But this is not a good thing. And this is why we, as black men and as a black man, we have to get ready, you know, for the next level. We're not going to fight. You know, we're going to rise, okay, from a social and economic perspective. We're going to start producing, manufacturing, educating, uh, 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 producing what we need to produce. Because, you know, going, you know, get, getting an education and getting a job and work for 40 years, you're basically just taking you out the game. But we got to pick the mantle up and do the first work over of our forefathers, which is John and Bobby Kennedy, Malcolm and Martin. Because poverty was an issue. And as long as poverty is on the uh, agenda, as long as poverty is still in existence, you're going to have crime because anyone that's impoverished, they will bust you upside your head for something to eat, you know, because even, even if you, you know, trying to do good, you know, your best choice could get, you know, you're going to, you could take a penitentiary chance, but it saddens my heart that the government and our politicians is not out there warning us and letting Chicago know about what's to come. Because when I turn the TV on, all I see is Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and these guys, our, our, our elected senators in this nation, you know, combating the Democratic Party. I mean, combating the Republican Party, going against the Republic. They're not trying to help the people. Their whole main objective is to not allow this current administration to take the progress the Obama administration brought us and take it to another level. They want to pull it back further. What I'm saying, let's go ahead and just work with the administration. Don't beat them, join them. Not from a political perspective, but join the movement and get it to the next level. That's where we got to stand, step in at, as, as men. So therefore, you know, from a spiritual perspective, we're pulling out of the, the far left and the far right, more so into the middle as nonpartisans to help everybody, the blacks, Black, Latino, 
Asian, Caucasian kinsmen to survive. Because I'm telling you, this progressive agenda from a democratic perspective is funded by a Hungarian by the name of George Soros. Okay? And he wants to progressively erase like any anything that's good. He wants everything to just be like like Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, that's why a lot of Christian whites have abandoned the Democratic Party and heterosexual whites and went to the Republican Party for the simple fact that they still believe in God. But you can't be a, 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 a true Christian and a believer and be a Democrat. They will they will condemn you, as you can see. When Justice Kavanaugh was, when they were doing the vote, these people in there screaming about rape victims and all of that. And all I say to women who have been, who's a part of that operation as a paid protester, if something were to happen to you from a uh, sexual assault perspective, use that same voice you use to stop Congress or the Senate. Use that same voice to yell and scream and bust the eardrum of the person that's trying to harm you or hurt you. Because when I was coming up, if, we, if they, they just said no, if they said no, game was over. They, they didn't have to scream it or yell it because we knew if they came back to us and said, did she say no? Yeah, that means you guilty. You know, but that's a whole nother story, a whole nother topic. But Chicago, man, y'all don't want this. I'm telling you. So you can't be riding dirty. Don't be walking down the street with your strap. Don't, you know, if you're slanging, if you're doing whatever, I'm telling you, they can just stop and just jack you up. You know, because one of my, um, and I'm going to say this in closing, because one of my, uh, he was a mentor at the time. And the reason I chose the private sector from a security perspective as a uh, Department of Defense contractor, and I didn't go into the police side of it, because my mentor was a former LAPD officer. And after I got the training and all this, he, he, he gave me the one, you know, one of the, a reference and got me into a police academy program from an education perspective at the and while we're going to lunch he told me a story and he told me a story when he was LAPD he said on uh, 92nd and Colden during the stop and frisk era he said that he you know they they was he was telling me so how they would just jack us up and as a kid all I can remember is when I was a kid and how they used to jack us up but I lived on 66 in Vermont, so it was in the 90s over there by where my grandma and them stay. Um, he told me a story where they saw a group of guys and, you know, how they just had the authority just to roll up on them, boom, and just jacked them up. Started slamming them on the car. Boom, what's your name? Boom, what's your name? And then he said he asked this black dude. He said, he was about your height. He was tall like you. And he said, I grabbed him. I said, what's your name? And he said, Scooter. He said, he, boom, knocked him out. I said, knocked him out? Knocked him out cold. Then we, while he's over there snoring, I grabbed the other, we jacked him up, and, you know, they all, you know, we got their IDs, checked to see if they had any warrants, but they all, they all came out clean and everything. They didn't have nothing on them, so we told them to get the fuck up out of here. But then Scooter, this little, this motherfucker started to come, he, he started to wake up. So as he's waking up out of his sleep that I, when I knocked him out, he was boasting about it. And Jim was about my height, six, about six foot. He said he grabbed him. Mm. He said, okay, we're going to do this the hard We're going to do this again. He said, now what's your name? He said, the guy, he cringed. Scooter. Slammed him on the car. And before I could hit him again, the, his partner grabbed his wallet and opened the wallet. And look, and the man named was Scooter. The man named was Scooter. And I was sitting there like, man, I, I can't do this. Man, he called me three days in a row because they took roll call, you know. And I got the time off of work and everything, but I went to work. My, the job I had at the time, I went back to work. And he called me like, what's going on? They called you, you know, the roll call today, but the, uh, the you know, the, the, the staff sergeant said you could come on in and you could still come tomorrow. Just be there tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, man, I ain't going out. And he called me two to two more days in a row. And I'm sitting there like, man, I can't do that. That's why I chose to, you know, go on the private sector side, which given me an opportunity to have this platform today because we got to have some people out there fight for us. And I'm one of them. 
And that's my 15 minutes, man, Chicago, man. Hey, hey, be careful out there, man. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm giving y'all the real. Okay, stop and frisk in full effect, Chicago. With that being said, man, it's bittersweet. But have a, have a great day. Better Black America. Peace out.